Hey, what's up guys? This is Vincent and in this video, I'm going to quickly review Photomatix Pro 7 so you can find out if it's worth it for you. So right now I'm on the interface of version 7.1. One thing you may miss is this photography mode of landscape, real estate or photogrammetry. Photomatix tries to assist you with your HDR merging and photogrammetry, it's a new word I just learned from HDR soft and I may have butchered it, but it's for engineering and scientific applications. But for our review, I'll leave it at landscape photography. I'll click on done. And I do have three photos in Adobe Bridge. These are photos that I took of Nice, France in the French Riviera. They are bracketed photos and I took it with my iPhone. So they are very noisy, which you'll see in the merging options or after I merge the photo. Let's get started. I'm gonna drag these photos into HDR Photomatix Pro 7 and I'll merge it to HDR. Click on OK and make sure these photos are selected. And the cool thing about Photomatix Pro 7 is it does give you a report on the exposures. So for example, the underexposed photo covers the brightest parts of the scene well. I have received different warnings for different bracketed photos. Now I'm gonna click on Next, choose Merge Options and you can let Photomatix align the images if it was like a windy day or if you handheld it. I'll just leave it on this preset of handheld. There's also on tripod. So the handheld preset of large shifts, it gives you a maximum shift at 20%, which Photomatix Pro will correct it for. But I don't think we need 20%, but I'll just keep it on that for now. And I will demo you or show you how the remove ghost option works. And then I'm gonna reduce noise on all images because I took it with a very small image sensor on the iPhone Pro 12 and I'll leave the strength very high because it will be an image that's very noisy as you'll see when I merge it. And I'll leave this unchecked, the reduced chromatic aberrations. And if you want, you can save the 32-bit HDR image after merging, but I don't recommend it because you're not able to see it on most monitors. So I'll leave this unchecked. I'll go to align and show the ghosting. So for deghosting, there's two options. There's selective deghosting where I can circle around a ghosted area, right click on it and select it as a ghosted area, or I can right click it and remove the selection. For this Photomatix review, I don't mind too much of the ghosting. It's just, just people here that you can barely see and maybe a few cars along the street. So I'll leave it on automatic deghosting and I'll change the shift to very mild. Okay, and then you can select a base photo for the ghosting if you want, but I'll click on apply. And now gets the fun part where Photomatix Pro gives you a lot of different presets. The presets are here and I recommend starting with a preset so you can get a good idea of the sliders to adjust minimally because these sliders here, they're very hard to understand. There is a toolbox at the bottom if you go over the sliders and it'll give you an idea of what each slider does. But as I change these presets, you'll notice the HDR setting preset here also changes. So the top parts are tone mapping and the bottom parts are fusion merging. So they're both HDR processes, but usually I find tone mapping is a little bit better. And with the presets here, sometimes they're very bad, sometimes they're very good. So if you look at Painterly, it gives you like an artistic HDR image and as you can see it's very noisy. So for noisy images before loading them into Photomatix, I suggest reducing or doing noise reduction on another photography software such as Capture One or Lightroom Classic. Both of them have Photomatix plugins. There's also monochrome presets at the bottom here. I like this one here, monochrome 3. But the best presets I find with Photomatix Pro are usually the balanced realistic and photography and then if you want to make changes let's say i want to compress it more or increase the tonal range i can increase it here by moving this slider a little bit to the right and then there's contract adaptation which is somewhat brightening up the shadows and as you can see it does have some basic adjustments like saturation temperature and brightness but it's missing the shadows or highlight sliders so depending on which preset you choose here, these sliders that are available, they all change. You can see micro contrast, it wasn't available before, but now it is. 
and if I go to tone compressor, the sliders change again. But let's say, for example, I want to increase the shadows here. One thing I can do is I can blend it with another image or one of the bracketed images for so for this case I'll click on the plus one exposure value increase it and then I'm going to brush away the sky so I'll leave the brush size and softness at 100 leave this detect edges unchecked and I'm just going to brush away the sky so I can clean up the sky a little bit and get that sun appearance a little bit better so that looks good that looks good and that looks good and now I'll just close this and then I'll change the opacity so I can control the shadows right here actually I should brush this away as well right here actually that doesn't look good so I'll undo that change the brush size change it a little bit bigger and let me just work on this for a minute. And that looks good. So now I can play around with this and make the shadows look a little bit better. And I think I'll leave it at 60. So this is the tone mapped image and it looks pretty good. There's still a lot of noise here I can notice. Let me see what happens when I zoom in. And yeah, so you can see a lot of noise. So it's best to do noise reduction before HDR merging in Photomatics Pro. You can still do noise reduction after the merging in another software. So let's see the original normally exposed image. This is the normally exposed image and this is the HDR tone mapped image using the tone compressor. So once you're done with the mapping, you click on next and finish. And then Photomatics will give you some final adjustments. These are just standard adjustments, contrast, sharpen, crop, and straighten. You can use them if you want, but I recommend making these final changes in another software. So you can see it looks pretty good right now. Once I click on done, just go back here. I'll just save this final image. Then you can save it wherever you want. I'm just going to click on cancel. And another option, let me just click on this and get rid of this. Another option is if you do bracketed photos and you have a batch of them, you can use the batch bracketed photos and you can merge up to 19 photos at a time. Actually, not 19 photos, 19 bracketed photos and then and then i don't know you can you can do like one hour of it if you have like an intervalometer and then you have the same nearly the same adjustment settings as you do with the standard hdr emerging or a tone mapping other than that if you guys enjoyed this video give it a like subscribe and check out my photography on instagram as always live easy sleep breezy and stay lovely